Hi, my name is Carola and I'm e-biking around Europe for one year to meet Christians from different backgrounds. Last week I showed you how I stayed on a boat for two days in France and after that I boarded a ferry to get to Ireland. The ferry ride was pretty long but the movie theater and the nice views got me through it and after almost 19 hours I saw the Irish coastline for the very first time in my life. stop to take a break it's really uh, weird today it's a very short bike ride today only two and a half hours but I feel so lightheaded and weak so I keep taking breaks I don't know what's going on today the nice views made up for it though and eventually I made it to Tanya who hosted me with her lovely family it was so nice to be welcomed into a home again and they even shared eggs of their very own ducks with me. Unfortunately, there was a pretty bad storm when I was leaving the next day. It's really windy and really rainy today and I'm wearing a shower cap because the other thing gets stolen. But it's just a short trip today, so it's fine. What I didn't know then was that I was about to meet Caroline and her husband Michael, who were so kind to invest a lot of time into connecting me with so many more Christians in Ireland. The electricity went out, so this is the only light we had, but I think it made it really cozy. We played some games, and I have to say, when I started this trip, I was hoping that I would find Christians who would open their homes to me so I could just get to know not only the Christian culture, but also the people themselves better, because I really do believe that we are one Christian family, and just having people now open their homes to me it just warms my heart so much and i really really appreciate it so much the next day caroline was so nice to show me around a bit and then i was off on the road again After a couple of days of biking, I made it to the Depping family, who celebrated not one but two birthdays while I was there, which was so fun. And I think it really speaks volumes about them taking me in anyways. Together we visited their church, which I really enjoyed, and I was also invited to join a really nice group of girls to the pub later, but I also sat down with Ralph to hear more about their church. My name is Ralph Depping. Uh, I go to Carrigaline Baptist Church and I'm both a member of the church and also serve as a lay elder in, in Carrigaline. So my, my day job is as a software engineer, um, uh, but yeah, there's four of us uh, as elders within the church with the role of a, an elder. It's described in different ways in the New Testament, um, a shepherd, a pastor, a bishop, an elder. Uh, we'd see all those as referring to the same essential role. and the sense of a pastor, shepherd, the care of, of souls. Uh, so the ones that, that come to mind are some of the toughest and some of the encouraging where you're helping people through difficult times, um, but really walking with people through those. Yeah, people looking to make decisions about direction in life. Um, and within those ones, I think it's really trying to encourage people that there's a lot more freedom than we realize. Uh, or God is, is a gracious God. He's not a, he's not a spoiled sport. Um, he cares for his people. He loves them. Uh, he leads them on. And sometimes we just know the next step. Um, so yeah, trying to help people think through good principles as they're trying to make bigger decisions, um, but also trying to get to that point where they can step out in faith and express a freedom and, and trust in the Lord um, in, in taking those next steps. I love that. I think making decisions and incorporating God in mm. decision process is something that every Christian at some point in life struggles with. Yeah, I think 
I think the, the, the Lord d doesn't leave us without guidance. Uh, so first and foremost, um, I think everything that we need primarily for life and godliness is provided through his word, through the scriptures. So God speaks, he's not silent, he's made himself known, he's given us conscience, he's given us creation, uh, he's given us other people, but, but I think supremely God has revealed himself through his son, through Jesus Christ and through his word, uh, the Bible. Uh, so we can know what God is like uh, by looking to Jesus and uh, looking at the scriptures. Um, so I think there are some clear principles there. So if making a decision, I think the first thing is, are there clear principles? Um, is this expressly prohibited by God in, in scripture? And I know good Christians disagree on many details there, but some things I think are clearly Good or, good or bad. Even, even if you've gone through that, it's trying to work through the, the impact of the decision. Um, you know, what impact will that have on others? Um, so, uh, so being other centric in our decision making. And then uh, I think finally you do get to that point where as I said, you have that freedom. Um, so you can still, after considering what God has said, uh, considering the impact to others, um, and discussing with others and getting good advice and good feedback. I think there does come a point where you can express a freedom in kind of decision making. Um, one thing that I always <laughs> uh, find helpful is the mnemonic it's called, so it's, it's, it's J-O-Y, um, so joy. So if you, if you go Jesus, others, yourself, that's, that's often a good way to help to make decisions. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit more, maybe first about the Baptist Church in general, mm -hmm. because there are, I, I personally have gone to Baptist Church with my family for a couple of years when mm. I was a teenager. That's actually where I came to my faith, my personal faith. Um, so I know a little bit about hmm. the Baptist Church, but maybe um, you could tell me a little bit more about like what are some key factors about the, the Baptist Church that somebody who had never heard of it would know what that means. Sure. We have a similar question that comes up all the time in Ireland. What's a Baptist or what's a Baptist Church? Um, because uh, Baptists are in Ireland are a very small minority of a minority. So the evangelical independent population in Ireland is maybe less than 1%. Um, Catholic Church is still probably mid-70s. Um, Anglicanism is maybe 6-7%, those, those kind of levels. So that's the broad picture. So, so the evangelical population in Ireland is, is less than 1% and it's probably the lowest of any English-speaking uh, country in the world. Um, so there, there's usually higher, there are lower percentages of evangelicals in Europe, countries, uh, countries within Europe, but in terms of English speaking populations, it's, it's the lowest in, in the world. So the first thing to say is nobody owns the name Baptist. So any church, any individual church uh, can use that name. So, so often it doesn't tell you very much about an individual church. Yeah, so, so you'll get a lot of variation among Baptist churches. Um, and so the distinctive element that I'd say is common to most Baptist churches are belief in believer's baptism, that you're not born a Christian, you're not born into the church of God. Um, but there is a sense where it's, it's on profession of faith that you profess, that you believe, that you should be baptized then as a sign that you love God and you love other people. And from that then you, you join a local fellowship. So then the other implication of that is the church then isn't uh, constructed based on where you're born or your parents or your family or the state, um, but it's on a, a free expression of faith. So congregations then, the, the people that are gathered together in a local church are there um, willingly or on a self-congregating model. So then you have a congregational based church government system. So instead of having bishops or presbyteries or uh, kind of a higher hierarchy, um, you have this congregational model. Um, so I'd say that they'd probably be the three key, key aspects that would distinguish Baptist churches. Um, and then um, other historical things um, that emerge from, from, from Baptist churches are um, liberty of conscience in terms of secondary matters. Um, so there are core things that all Christians should believe, but, but allowing more latitude on, on secondary issues often. So that's why you get a huge variation among Baptist churches. Some will have distinctives and practices that others don't, um, and yet they'd all be Baptist churches. And um, because they, they sought to 
not enforce belief through the state or through state churches. Um, you weren't born into the state and the church simultaneously. Um, they often struggled with r having religious freedom for that view because the predominant view at the time was uh, the ruler determines the religion and everyone is born in, in, into the church as such and into the state. Um, so, so I'd say another distinctive over the years generally with Baptists has been a belief in toleration and freedom of conscience and religious liberty and seeing that as the best guarantor for people being able to come to faith, so not enforcing religious belief and, and allowing for, for conscience and, and freedom of belief and conscience within society at large. So one thing I always ask at the end of the interview is how can we pray for your church specifically? Oh, that's, that's great and, and do appreciate your, your prayers. Um, yeah, we've been very blessed over many years as, as a church. I think keeping, keeping that focus on, on the Lord and on others, that's, please pray for that. I ended my time in Carrigaline with a really fun visit of a local pub and of course had to try a Guinness while I was there. And I didn't know it then, but I would actually meet up with some of the girls at a later point in my trip again. But that sums up the first two weeks in Ireland. As always, I would be so, so grateful if you could subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below the video so that you don't miss my videos that come out every Thursday. I would also really appreciate if you could like this video and comment something nice if you like. This is always so encouraging to me. I need to end this video though by saying a big, big thank you to Primrose, who I have never met, but it was so nice to connect me with lots of people in Ireland, and it kind of snowballed into meeting more people who connected me with other people, so it really, really impacted my trip, and I can't thank you enough. That's it for this week, and I will see you all next Thursday.